Thank you. Happy Monday, everybody. So uh, Joe Lucy here, Secured Retirement Financial, and uh, welcome to this week's Market Huddle. Um, you know what? I had a conversation the other day with a client of ours, and um, he said with everything going on in 2020, the last thing he wants to do is miss an opportunity or, or have something fall through the cracks when it comes to his retirement planning. So um, I thought, well, let's talk about what it is that we should be looking at here in this last quarter. I mean, uh, um, we've got, uh, well, less than 13 weeks left, I guess. Um, now that we're, I guess we're probably more like eight or, or nine weeks with uh, just almost in November. So what should we be looking at? What are those seven things that we should be addressing before the end of the year? And uh, that's what we'll be discussing here. Thank you, Jeannie, uh, Jeannie for uh, congratulating us on the new office. I hope that everybody that's on the uh, uh, presentation today can get out to our office. Um, what we've uh, been doing is we're going to be doing some kind of um, – uh, 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 social distancing type events, maybe having small groups of uh, folks to come through. Best way to come out and see the new office here. Um, for those of you that don't know, we moved from the West End in St. Louis Park, uh, that 577500 building that we've been in for almost 11 years, to a new uh, 10,000 square foot office here in um, uh, St. Louis Park, just a couple uh, miles south on Excelsior Boulevard and Highway 100. Uh, technically, the crossroad is Brunswick, but we're really just about two blocks from Excel, from Highway 100 going to the west. Um, schedule a review. If anything we talk about here resonates, if it's something you want to make sure we're addressing in your retirement planning, schedule that review. Come on out. You get a private tour um, and uh, see the new office. Um, for those of you that have not been to our offices before, um, at the end of the presentation, everybody's. Um, we can schedule uh, either a 15-minute phone call with you to uh, look for the number one action step you can be taking right now to help your retirement, or we can schedule a full review, whatever works best for you. I think the default is going to be 15 minutes here, but when we schedule that, just uh, let us know that you want uh, either to come out to the office and, and get that private tour or what have you, or if you prefer, we can always do things virtually like this, whatever works for you. Um, but anyways, on to today's market huddle. Otherwise, I'll be going all afternoon. Seven things, seven things I think everybody should be looking at in their retirement planning to make sure that they've got all the year-end strategies intact. And uh, um, and away we go here. So give me one second. All right. And here's that disclaimer. Those of you that are new to this uh, may not have seen this before, but basically it says I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. We don't uh, interpret tax code here in our office, but we do a whole lot of look forward tax planning. Um, we also don't uh, write legal documents, but we can certainly um, work with folks that can to make sure that uh, uh, you have things in order. And, and uh, some of that may even come up on today's program. With that said, I'm a CFP. We're fiduciaries. We have to put your interests first. And we believe in an approach that, that helps families take their money back, take it back tax efficiently, make sure it's going to last a lifetime. And if we can, let's grow the wealth. Just don't do it at the compromise of making sure we always have enough income. So number one, Roth conversions. I'll tell you, with everything going on here in 2020, this, I think, is maybe the most overlooked opportunity when we have families in our office that have not been working with us. Um, understand that the tax code that we're in, we're at 40-year lows. Um, now, the Despite or depending on how the next election goes here in a couple weeks, actually just about a week in the day, um, we may know have a little bit more clarity on where direction of the taxes are going more near term. But long term, I think that very few economists, very few um, professionals would would argue with me when I say tax rates have to go higher. Think about all of the uh, stimulus that's been pumped in. You know, they're still talking about doing additional stimulus, but we've had three to three and a half trillion dollars of stimulus. It's all been piled on top of a national debt that's already been a pretty big number here for many years. And no longer is it a matter of, I think taxes are going to go higher. It's a taxes will be going higher just how soon. One of the best ways we can defend ourselves is by looking at Roth conversions. Um, but Oftentimes, we, we see two mistakes when it comes to Roth conversions. The first mistake is this. Somebody that should be doing them doesn't do a Roth conversion. 
So, um, Jim, I'll come back to your question here at the end of the presentation, probably. Um, but um, somebody that should be doing them misses the opportunity. They ignore it. And then all of a sudden they find themselves down the road in a situation where they uh, used to remember those commercials about the V8. Boy, I wish I would grabbed a V8. Boy, I wish I had done something more about look forward tax planning and taken uh, some of my taxes down. Um, by doing Roth conversions. So that's the first mistake. We see families that don't do them at all. The other side of this, though, is we see families that do too much too fast. It's like trying to stick a whole apple in your mouth sometimes. Uh, better off taking it off in chunks. What's our best advice? Well, let's start to project where your taxes are going to fall here for 2020. This year is a weird year. A lot of families are finding themselves uh, uh, maybe with some additional capital gains they weren't used to. Um, I'll tell you those mutual funds, if you have a bunch of mutual fund accounts that are not tax deferred like IRAs or not tax free like Roths, uh, those are going to be really spitting off a lot of capital gains potentially this year. Uh, a lot of families maybe had to sell off some, some investments or take some, uh, stock options through work. There's a lot of different reasons why this year's taxes are going to be different. So, um, let's sit down, let's go through your current tax, let's see where you're gonna fall in the tax brackets, and then let's optimize the amount of Roth conversions that can be done. It really comes down to trying to pay more tax now um, and avoid paying higher tax down the road. Um, one thing, I'm, a lot of families are always surprised when they say this, but you know, I can currently move about 320 some thousand dollars and only pay 24% federal tax. Now that sounds like a lot of money, I know. But two years ago, if I was a married couple and I had $80,000, I was paying 25% tax on every dollar above that. So we can today, in today's tax rates, move about four times more money at a 24% rate that was 80, that would have been 25 uh, at 25% at of the amount. That's the opportunity here. We got to be careful of it. The other thing, though, is we also, uh, for those of you that are 65 and older that are on Medicare, not everybody's on Medicare that's 65 and older, but if you are on Medicare, we got to be careful of IRMA, income related to Medicare adjustment amounts. It's not your long lost aunt. IRMA is uh, the penalty that you pay for having a higher income when it comes to paying Medicare. So we want to make sure that if you're going to pay additional Medicare premiums that you're well aware of that ahead of time so that we can properly plan. Some families that we visit with should probably be paying additional premiums on um, Medicare for a few years to get themselves in a better situation long-term tax-wise. Some families, by doing the additional premiums, uh, 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 they, they just get caught on the wrong end here. Um, one other thing before I move on to the next point here. If you find yourself in a situation where your income is substantially higher uh, going into retirement, but then you retire and your income drops and you get notification that you're going to be paying higher Medicare premiums because of that income, Make sure you're talking to your advisors. We could, there are forms. There's an SSA 44 form. We can file on your behalf or we can't file it on your behalf, but we can show you where the form is and we can direct you on how to get that properly filed so that you can get some uh, abatement on those additional premiums on Medicare, which quite frankly is an additional tax. Um, you know what? I'll go back to these before I move on. So, uh, Jim, question on Roth conversions. If you're over 59 and a half, does a five-year rule still apply? Can you clarify how this applies? Um, so, folks, any there's two different kinds of Roth type planning. There's Roth contributions. That's what you've been doing when you were working and you were able to write a check for 6000 or if you're over age 50, $7,000 into an IRA or a Roth IRA. You have until tax filing for that or April 15th. Um, when you do that, the five-year rule only applies to the very first IRA that you or Roth IRA that you uh, created. Uh, IRAs and Roth IRAs are traded separate. So if you have a Roth IRA, it's the very first five years of that um, that Roth IRA. So if I filed and created my first Roth IRA back in 2000, I'm well past the five-year rule. It doesn't even apply to Roth contributions. That's the money that comes out of the checkbook at tax time. A Roth conversion, Jim, is taking money out of an IRA and moving it and paying the tax on that money that was never taxed and moving it to a Roth IRA. There's an unlimited amount of money that can be moved. You don't need wages. The trade-off is the five-year rule always applies, but rarely does that become an issue. Why? Well, because if I move $10,000 um, from an IRA to a Roth, 
I still have access to the original 10. The tax has already been paid. It's only on the growth of that 10 um, that I would be taxed. And the good news is the IRS lets me choose which $10,000 I want to move. So, um, and actually, if you do pay the tax, it's only like you would have been paying tax coming from an IRA. So it's not even a big deal. Jim, let us explain how that works with you one-on-one uh, -on -one a little bit later. Also, Jim, also, I, I did get your email, and I think that that's a fantastic idea. We'll be addressing, uh, uh, um, uh, Jim had asked about uh, uh, some planning opportunities that we're going to be bringing up in a future um, uh, uh, webinar. Uh, so Gary, does a conversion done in January for 20 the taxes increase later in the year? Which rate are you allowed? Are you taxed on? Um, you know what? You're going to be taxed, Gary, on the um, on the on the year end tax rate. So Gary, if I move money today, or or even up until December 31st, I'll be taxed on the 2020 tax rates. Should um, the IRS choose sometime in 2021 to change tax rates? Uh, which could, I guess, happen depending on the election and, and, and such. Um, if you were to move money in January, you're going to be subject to whatever they change the rates to more than likely in 2021. So it's a good question. Um, probably something we should kind of clarify that I'm answering that the way you're asking the question, Gary, before you just take action on it. So at the end of the presentation, uh, let's schedule that 15-minute call and address that for you. Okay. Uh, moving on, number two, seven things that we should be doing here between now and the end of the year. We got about eight weeks to do these. Uh, some of these you're going to want to take action on. Uh, everybody should, and some of these maybe um, uh, just be aware that they that something you should be thinking about, and then and then maybe you can move on. So if you're still working, look at the employer planning contributions. How much money can be paid in? Should you be paying towards a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA? Um, I usually prefer to put money towards if I have um, other assets, if I have just if I have other accounts besides just a 401k, most of the time, like personally, I'm making contributions to a traditional 401k, but then I'm taking the other IRA monies that I have and I'm converting those into a Roth. It comes out to a wash wash and we can show you how that works. Another uh, question that you might have is should you be con uh contributing the full max into a health savings account. Um, I put that in this section. Not everybody's HSA accounts are under their employer plans, but if you have a high deductible health plan, um, money going into a health savings account is a tax deduction. If it gets used down the road for medical expenses, it's tax-free. There's very, there's no better place, uh, the kind of money than that. I get a, it. It's tax-free going in, tax-free going out. But the nice thing about an HSA is if you decide down the road you want to go buy a place in Florida, you want to buy a place in Boca Raton, you can take that money. It was tax deferred on the way in. It can come out like a, a traditional IRA, and you'll be taxed like a traditional IRA. So, so there's some neat advantages to that. Something we can look at for you um, if, if uh, you're unsure if you're doing the right thing there. Again, at the end of the presentation, let's spend 15 minutes going through these. Better yet, um, come in the office, schedule a full review, and we'll give you a private tour of the new digs here. So number three, uh, charitable contributions and charitable gifting. Um, boy, I'll tell you, there's probably a whole lot of organizations that could use your help this year. I have a neighbor that has done some fundraising, and she's told me that the amount of money being generated, um, she works for Mayo, um, is is down substantially. And I know that a lot of organizations, a lot of families haven't been going to church. Um, you know, they've been doing it online. It's a little easier. Or, or you know, I think that a lot of the not 501c3s are, are, are uh, down a little bit this year. If you do charitable gifting, keep in mind, we want to probably make those contributions before December 31st. If you are under 70 and a half, um, uh, your charitable gifting, uh, you can gift appreciated stock, which is sometimes a good idea, or cash. Um, or if you don't know where you eventually want that money, you can put it into an account called a donor advised fund. These are all different ways that we can show you how to do some smart charitable planning if, you, um, if you're doing some of that. If you're over 70 and a half, even though there was no required distribution this year, you can consider doing a qualified charitable distribution. That can uh, benefit you because it's what's called an above the line deduction. I don't want to get too much into the weeds on today's program, but um, if you're doing some charitable gifting um, and, um, and and sometimes if you've been told you should know uh, that you can't necessarily 
deduct them anymore because a higher de deduction, standard deduction. Um, you know, let's sit down because sometimes there's unique ways that we can group up um, charitable gifts. Uh, that was another one I was going to talk about. So let's think about that. You're gifting through the church all throughout the year. You can't take a deduction because you're under the standard threshold. But what if you were to gift what you would do in 2021 in December? The church or the organization that you want to donate to still gets the full benefit of that. Um, but, but you could maybe take two years worth of deductions in one year. So let's show you how grouping works if you're doing some charitable gifting and, uh, um, and, and such. Three things so far of the seven. First one is we want to take a look at uh, Roth conversions or tax-free planning strategies. We can also look at life insurance retirement plans. Some of you are aware of those. Uh, number two, look at the employer planning contributions and, and, and consider doing HSA contributions if you're eligible. The third is let's review your charitable gifting. Uh, number four on the list, health insurance. Boy, I'll tell you, that is probably the number one area. When we find somebody that wants to retire earlier than 65, the one thing that kind of gets in the way a lot of times is how much uh, or how they're going to cover for health insurance. Now, we might have a little bit more clarity on what direction the things might be going here on a national level here in a week or so. But um, if you have credible coverage and the way to find out if you have credit, if you're 65, you know that you need to file for Medicare. The way around that is if you have credible coverage. It's usually going to be through your employer or your spouse's employer. Uh, but the key words you want to use are talk to the HR department and find out if you have credible coverage. Uh, it used to be a little bit more uh, occurring where I'd see somebody that does not have credible coverage and they didn't take Medicare and then they'd get stung later on. But um, I, I imagine it still happens maybe under the new uh uh, healthcare rules that just can't. But if you have coverage and you're looking at uh, uh, waiting until you take your Medicare, I encourage you to talk to your HR department and check in on credible coverage. The other thing is um, open enrollment is right now um, with your Medicare plans. I encourage you to find somebody to sit down with and review what your options are. Um, um, you want to do this because a lot of these rules change. Nobody, uh, you know, a lot of times the, 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 the ladies and gentlemen that are working with the health insurance when you signed up, um, you, they get awfully busy because they only give them 60 days to, to make any changes. So I would suggest that if you have Medicare and it's been a few years or if your health has changed a lot or maybe you've added or subtracted some medications, Good idea to sit down with somebody that, that can do that. Um, schedule that 15-minute call if you want some ideas on, on who we'd uh, recommend you visit with. Uh, this one here is one that, unfortunately, you'll probably never know if you mess up. Um, you know, in my personal uh, situation, I had a uh, an uncle and an aunt that didn't speak for probably the last 20 years. Now they both have passed on, but unfortunately because of the way that my grandfather kind of didn't take care of certain things, um, I, I had uh, an aunt and uncle that, that, that did not get along very well. Um, everybody knows when there's a will, there's a family member. Um, you kind of want to make sure you get this right. Check the beneficiaries. You know what the new tax laws, the SECURE Act was passed last year. The stretch IRA is wrong. It means your IRAs have to be completely uh, uh, paid out over a 10-year period of time. Um, that changes if you end up putting a non-personal beneficiary on there or if one of your beneficiaries isn't around. So if you had money going to the charitable organization or, or something like that, that can change things. Anyways, good idea. Just run through it. Every one of your IRAs, every one of your life insurance policies, your annuities, um, even a lot of the bank accounts, if you have a POD, which is a lot of times a good idea, have beneficiaries, check the beneficiaries. Let's, let's go through that and make sure that they're set up right. You know, uh, things change in families, dynamics, you know, divorces, deaths, uh, additional grandchildren, whatever. Let's make sure that that's all taken care of. Um, and, and you don't want to leave that kind of mess to, to somebody else. Um, doesn't have to be done before December 31st. But it's a good idea to kind of put on your list, kind of like changing the batteries in the in the uh, in the fire detectors in the house. You want to do it once or twice a year just to make sure that we don't have a problem down the road. Uh, if it's been a while, let's sit down and review your beneficiary designations and your estate planning with you. Risk investment strategies and risk tolerance. Um, boy, I'll tell you. 
I think that we have had more calls in the last two weeks about what to do in anticipation of the election than um, than I can ever imagine. And I've been doing this for 25 years. So, you know, I, this is my sixth presidential election, maybe my seventh, I guess I'd have to run through the numbers that, that I've been an advisor helping families and, and, you know, I'm 50 some years old, so I've had more than that. But um, this is the most contentious I've seen. Um, it seems like there's a whole lot of fear. I think that there's a likelihood that we could see a period of time here after the election where we aren't sure who the, the, the um, next president's going to be. Um, we've seen that a few times in the past, but I, I, I don't know. It just seems like they're really fired up this year. Um, I hope that we have fast answers, but if you're concerned about what to do about the election, let's sit down and um, review what some options are. I'm not a big fan. If this is money that's going to be longer term investing money, I'm not a big fan of going and putting everything in cash. Um, but if uh, you're going to sleep a little bit better at night, putting a little bit into some more secure, safer money, uh, now might be a good time to do that. The market's down pretty good here today, about 750 last I looked. So, um, you know, today may not be the best idea, but but let's sit down and and review what the planning is for you and make sure that we have a plan that meets your risk tolerance and meets your overall investment goals. Um, maybe want to do that before next Tuesday, before the election. But either way, something I want to be doing here before the end of the year, interest rates, interest rates, bonds, those mutual funds that were traditional safe haven for investment risk may not necessarily be the best place for money right now. Interest rates are at historic lows. We've never been this low. Um, more than likely, we're going to see interest rates going higher than lower. So, so let's look and see how that works. We have a tool called Hidden Levers that will show you what uh, different events like uh, an extended election or interest rates going up or even inflation or hyperinflation or national debt or tax increases, all these different events that can occur here over the next few years, we can take your portfolio, we can stress test it and show you what you might see for results out of that. That is something we a lot of times do behind the scenes. We don't always have time to do it uh, while you're in for your review. But if you think that that'd be kind of nice to look at, let us know. It doesn't take us that much time. We've already got the reports in most cases prepared and uh, something we can review on that 15 minute call. Finally, one last thing. If you still have money that is sitting at substantial losses, don't worry about a small loss. You know, it's, you invested uh, 5,000 and it's down $200. It probably won't make that big a difference. But if you've got investments that are sitting on larger losses, consider tax harvesting. The rules say if I sell something, I have to wait 30 days to, 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 to buy it back before I can recognize a loss. Um, so what ended up happening is a lot of families would, uh, uh, buy something and then a day or two sell it and they used to get around it. Now they put 30 days before and after. It's called a 60 day rule. We know how to make sure that we can take full advantage of any tax harvesting that there is. This is going to be specifically in, uh, important to anybody that has any long term gains this year that you have to recognize. Um, but even if you don't, you know, up to $3,000 of uh, your losses can be offset. And there's really astute, smart ways that we can show you how to take advantage of this. And, uh, you know, uh, TD Ameritrade, we don't pay for buying and selling. It used to be um, back in the old days, I'd have a discussion with somebody about uh, a tax harvesting and they were concerned that maybe the commissions were, were offsetting the gains. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. There is no commissions there. It's just doing the right thing for you as our clients. So seven things to uh, uh, look at here before year end. Just a quick recap. Roth conversions. Let's look at how we can move your money from tax deferred into more tax advantage. It can be a Roth IRA. It could be a uh, life insurance retirement plan. It could even be putting the money in municipal bonds. There's a lot of different ways we can do this. Most important is we got to do a look forward tax review for you to show you what the right number is and look at the current situation you're sitting in as far as your tax rate for the year, make some projections, see how much money we can move at a certain bracket. Number two, uh, we talked about the employer plans. Uh, your 401k should be putting in money in traditional or Roth money. Um, you know, there's a lot of different discussions around that. HSA contributions. Uh, let's look at those employer plans. Another good reason to visit before the end of the year, besides the fact you'll get the private tour of the office. Three, charitable gifting options. Let's sit down on that a little bit more specifically. Number four, we talked about health insurance, both Medicare and uh, bridging strategies. If you're going to retire in 2020 or if you have retired, um, how does that work out? Um, real quickly, another uh, mistake we see sometimes is somebody gets a package when they 
um, are invited to leave or they take a package when they do leave their employer that runs through halfway into 2021, if that's your situation, let's sit down because there's some mistakes that can be made there that get a little costly. Uh, five, let's look at your estate plan. More specifically, let's make sure we have your uh, beneficiaries correctly uh, not not just correctly identified, but also correctly um, uh, uh, documented on your plans. Six is look at your risk tolerance and your investment strategies. Uh, if you've got concerns about the election, it's a good time to talk right now. But even after next Tuesday, let's make sure that we, we are looking and, and setting ourselves up for a really good uh, 2021. Last was the tax harvesting, looking for ways that we can uh, combine both our investment strategies and our tax planning. Um, we're here for you. If you have any questions, I hope you found some value here out of today. Gary and Jim, if you have additional questions on either one of those, um, let, let's make sure we answer those questions for you. But call us for a 15 uh, to 30 minute uh, tax smart retirement analysis as usual. I'm going to post that so you can click and, and get right on our calendars yourself. Um, and I'll leave this up here for just a second or two. But if anybody else has any questions, now would be a good time. Otherwise, we will wrap it up. Anybody? I, who else has been surprised that we've had snow already? It's kind of disappointing. And I know that some of you are calling in or listening to this this week from uh, Florida and Texas. And you're probably laughing about how we have snow already before Halloween. Everybody remembers the big Halloween snowstorm of 87, of course. But uh, oh, it's just kind of annoying. Hopefully, I'm hearing that we've got warmer weather middle of this week. Uh, all right, folks, I don't see any other questions. Um, with that, why don't we wrap up this week's um, market huddle? Again, I'm Joe Lucy. I'm the um, founder and CEO here of Secured Retirement Financial. We're here if you need anything. Schedule some time. The, the, the phone call is right there. Uh, let's review some of these seven items. Some of these are things that we can do really quickly over 15 minutes. Uh, especially depending on how familiar we are with your financial planning. But if you want, you can always schedule a little bit more time and we can get it a little bit deeper dive. With that said, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their week. You're welcome, Gary. And uh, um, have a great day, everybody.